Welcome to the Math 1 Lesson Summary Video for the task Interpreting Functions. This is a practice understanding task and the purpose is to practice the following skills related to functions. And there are five skills that we're going to go through in this video. I've broken them down by letter. So first off we have skill A, use function notation to distinguish between input and output values. So for this video I'm going to be bouncing around from problem to problem. So if you'll look with me at problems 15 and 16. So since we're trying to distinguish between input and output values, it's important to consider that in question 15, it says what is g of negative 3? It's important to recognize that negative 3 is an input. So we're given an input and we're asked to find the associated output. So at negative 3 input, we can see the g of x output is negative 5. So g of negative 3 is negative 5. On the other hand, for what values is f of x equal to 0? That's an output. So what are the inputs that give us an output of 0? And so we can see f of x has an output of 0 here and here in two places. So that's going to be x equals 1 and x equals 2 for f of x. So that takes care of objective A. The next set of objectives related to the purpose is to evaluate functions and combine functions through addition. So the instructions in 21 and 22 and 20 say use the following relationships to answer the questions below. We're only gonna do 21 and 22. So first off, we're fulfilling objective B, evaluating functions. So to find f of two, I plug in two for x or substitute, I should say, three times two minus two. Well, that's six minus two, which is four. So f of two is four. To find g of two, I do the same thing. There is no x to replace for the g function. So no matter what x is, g is always eight. So g of two equals eight. And then for h of 2, I'm taking the h function, 2 to the x, I'm doing 2 to the 2, which is 4. So f of 2 and h of 2 are both 4, but for very different reasons. Number 22 is fulfilling objective C, combine functions through addition. It says write the equation for g of x plus h of x. So g of x is 8, h of x is 2 to the x. So g of x plus h of x would be 8 plus 2 to the x. We can't simplify that any further because there are no like terms to be combined. Going down to part D, determine solutions of equations of the form f of x equals g of x from graphs and tables. So we have f of t and g of t, and in problem 9, we are asked where is f of t equal to g of t? So we're looking for the places where the graphs intersect. And so that would be at two t values, t equals negative two, and t equals positive three. So there's negative two there and three there for the t values of those intersection points. That allows us to answer question 10 where is f of t greater than g of t? So in other words, where is the line, the straight line f of t above the curve g of t? And so that's right in this zone in between. Those are the places where f of t is bigger than g of t, so in between negative two and three. So the way I would write that is negative two is less than t, which is less than three. And those are the two questions that help me fulfill this purpose for part d. Um, going back to combining functions through addition, let's just talk for a second about number 11. f of 0 is 1, g of 0 is negative 5. So we're looking at 1 plus negative 5, which is negative 4. So when we're combining functions at a given input value, we find the value of each function separately and then we add or subtract or multiply or divide whatever the operation is asking us to do. 
in this case add. And then finally our last objective is to create graphs of functions given conditions. So we're asked to graph a function that has the following features and I'm going to start with the domain because the domain is most important for being able to know how to graph this function. So domain is from negative 5 to 10. So I'll make halfway be 5 all the way be 10 which means this is negative 5 and negative 10 on my scale. So I know this function is going to cover from negative 5 over to 10 based on the domain. It says f of 3 needs to be greater than f of 6 so 1, 2, 3. Let's just put a point that's bigger than 6. f of 1 equals 0 so that means right here we're going to have a point. f of 2 equals 4 so here at 2 we'll be at 4 f of x is increasing from negative 5 up to 3 so that means I could start anywhere as long as there's space for me to go up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that since I need it to be increasing from negative 5 to 3 it's gonna be important that at negative 5 I start somewhere down below the x-axis so that I have space to go up through f of 1 equaling 0 as was required and then up to the point increasing all the way and then it can turn around and come back down and end off at 10 on the x-axis. Thank you for watching. If you need help with the Ready Set Go problems related to this task, please check out the Ready Set Go support videos in Canvas.